Another part of this unit is dealing with the various macroeconomic schools of thought. Really the first group to look at economics were the classical economists like Adam Smith, top right. They thought the government should not intervene in the economy, and then when government intervened, they distorted parts of the economy which created ill effects. Um, it felt that the long run was more important than any short run changes that could be made by the government. And if individuals are allowed to choose, they will always maximize utility and be best off. So think about every decision we make. We talk about opportunity costs. We talked about maximizing utility. That when left up to yourselves, you always maximize utility with every dollar that you spend. So the idea was that when we give up money to the government, that they will not always maximize the utility of everybody. So I gave the example earlier in the year of Imagine a cul-de-sac that only three families live on, or one family. Your tax dollars went to pay for that street, and chances are, unless you know somebody on that block, you will never use that street. So when they sp spend a million dollars of tax dollars to create that, then you are not better off, and you've wasted, or the government in this case, you might feel, has wasted your money. So the key feature is no government involvement. If somebody wants to build that street, they're going to build it themselves. You shouldn't have to pay for things you're not going to use because that doesn't maximize your utility. And for a long time, that was the only economics policy until John Maynard Keynes and the demand side policies came into uh, the limelight during the Great Depression. Because classical economists just said, don't worry, we're going to be just fine. The long run will self-adjust. And for a lot of people, as the Great Depression went on and on, and we've done that assignment on the worst year of the Great Depression, how many years it was really bad, John Maynard Keynes comes up with the idea that um, the use of fiscal policy can affect aggregate demand and fix the troubled economy. It became popular with the Great Depression through the work of FDR and in increasing the government's role in the economy to help create jobs and boost aggregate demand so that in the short run, people are better off. In the long run, we always say everybody's better off. But John Maynard Keynes kind of quipped back at the classical economist that, and his very famous line is, in the long run, we're all dead. So his idea is that if we wait for the long run, it may never get here, and you're going to die, you know, penniless and without any food and no job in the Great Depression, so people can't afford to wait for the long run. And so the key feature of his policies was to boost aggregate demand to get out of a recession through acts of Congress, that that would affect the demand side of the equation of the graph. As time went on towards the 1960s, 70s, and 80s, monetarists started to pop up, such as Milton Friedman. They feel that the economy can be fixed through the manipulation of the money supply, not by taxes or government spending. And so while it's going to kind of work the same way as fiscal policy, that Congress shouldn't act. It should be groups like the Federal Reserve Bank of America that controls the nation's money supply. And that through printing, uh, we'll just leave it at that for now, more or less money. The circular flow is fixed and the economy is better off. So the key feature here is to fix a troubled economy through the money supply, which then can down the road affect aggregate demand as there's more money circulating through the economy, through loans and other ways that um, we're not going to get into right now, that, that that circular flow wheel keeps going or speeds up or slows down in the case of a peak. And then there's the supply side economists such as Laffer, top right. And they really kind of got their place in the sun under President Reagan in the use of his trickle-down economics. And supply side economists feel that the best way to fix an economy and to make it better is to increase the supply of goods, the SRAS, in order to drive prices down and increase production. If you draw an aggregate supply, aggregate demand graph, and increase short-run aggregate supply, what we notice is the price level goes down, which is better for us. You have $100 in your pocket, let's say, and now because price level remains low instead of going up, such as aggregate demand, that your money now buys more stuff. And there's also an increase in real GDP, so there actually is more stuff out there also. And their theories revolved around the idea to promote favorable tax policies on businesses and provide subsidies to businesses to help them produce more. So that if they produce more, they hire more workers, more workers, buy more stuff because they have money, and so on and so on and so on. So by creating 
uh, favorable tax policies for businesses that will kind of trickle down to aggregate demand eventually as those workers then now have a job and spend more money. So the key feature here is to increase supply to make people better off. 